the core emphasis has been on how to maximize those gifts how to take advantage of the things that God has made available by releasing those gifts to us. It's not enough to know what is available. You must be able to know how to make what is available yours. And he has been saying to us that the secret to transforming knowledge into practical experience is to become a kind of individual. A kind of individual. So matters of the Holy Spirit working upon us to bring us under the Lord's government have been raised in this season. When I began on Friday night, I told us that every time God wants to do something new, he tears the veil indicating that he's raising a new kind of people. People who will have capacity to journey with God, have experiences with God that are intimate, and be able to contact God to the level where they can also bring the expressions and the realities of God in their individual space. If you've listened carefully, you will find that it's not enough to name the name of the Lord. There is a burden upon your life to be able to affect your sphere of influence with the same thing that has affected you on the inside. So you will hear that when the Lord, when the Bible testified about John the Baptist, the Bible says that John the Baptist was a burning and a shining light. Jesus himself testified, he said, as long as I am in the world, because I am the light of the world, as long as I am in the world, no man will walk in darkness. Your true Christian experience has not reached its full potential until what has happened in the privacy of your engagements with God has become so tangible that the overflow begins to implicate everyone that enters into your space. Until that has begun to happen, what you call your Christian experience has not reached its maximum potential. So the warfare that the Christian will fight is a warfare of reaching that place as a vessel that is dedicated unto God whereby God has a right of way through your life that is the warfare every believer fights God wants to be so God in your life that anywhere that you are you are an excuse for his witness to be sounded but it is possible to have 52 Christians in a place and yet the reality of God cannot be found. And it is not because God does not want to express himself, but God every time has designed the visible realm in such a way that if he's ever going to invade, the only platform by which he will be invade is the platform of a vessel that is yielded to him. So the war that happens in the realm of the spirit, as long as you still breathe in this realm, the warfare, the number one warfare that happens in the realm of the spirit is a warfare of government. Who will rule over your life? Who will determine the posture that you sustain in the visible realm? That is the warfare that happens in the realm of the spirit. This is why Satan fights your prayer life. Because prayer is not primarily a tool that we use to get things from God. Prayer primarily is a tool for intimacy. It's a tool for intimacy. This is why proud men do not pray. This is why people who don't take God seriously, you will never know the journey of prayer until you have learned the sacrifice of priority. If you've not known how to elevate God above your personal needs, your personal desires, the corruption of your age and generation, you will never truly know the joys of prayer. Prayer is a journey for lovers. Prayer is not a journey for those ones who have not matured in their work with God, that all they think that prayer is for is to get their needs met. Ooh, many years ago, God told me, he walked into my room and he said to me, he said, Kesena, there is nothing I cannot give you. Nothing I cannot give you. That thing was like, like liberation to my soul. Liberation to my soul. 
so if there's anything i have not heard if there's nothing if there's anything that i have not touched it's not because god is incapacitated it's just because at that moment god doesn't consider that a priority to my journey it's not because he doesn't have the the power to bring it to pass he knows that i don't need it now and all you need to do is read scriptures carefully you will find out that even before god put adam on the face of the earth god had designed that everything that adam needed food everything he needed was already provided and adam's priority was just to walk before the lord and be blameless the war in the spirit is a war of government and regardless of the rich things that you hear from this conference if you don't make a commitment to bring your life under the government of god you will be like a leaking vessel you will have enough information but your life will not strike a chord where it matters i tell my people it is when we die we will know men that truly lived it's when we die now everybody can masquerade everybody can pretend like their life matters but you see it's when we stand before the great king we will know the people that truly made impact on the earth and if you've ever read scriptures you will know that the earth is a good accountant the earth is a good record keeper the bible says that when the lord confronted abel he said where is thy and cain he said where is thy brother abel and cain felt that because no mortal was around to see the activities the nefarious activities he engaged in he felt that he could masquerade before the great omniscient and god said that they, you you did not know that an accountant was present who kept the record so the blood of your brother cried unto me from the earth the earth guaranteed that cain would not escape judgment because everything that cain did in the secret places that he thought no mortal could see the earth kept accurate records i don't want to appear before the great one and he looks at me and says, car how i wish you truly lived what a useless life to have that you are applauded before men and you are not recognized beyond in the place of spirits that god doesn't know your name but in your church you have a good attendance you have a tight card they've given you a tight tool and poured oil on your head but before the great one he doesn't know you and you see i'm not a bad man jesus he gave us the model for working with god he said as i know the father the father also that's the way the relationship works there are many who call him abba hello hello and yet when your sound appears in the courts of god it's appearing like the sound of a stranger and the bible says that the prayer of a sinner is an abomination tonight i don't want you to miss the move of god i saw ripples upon ripples of the wave of his presence i saw it like a mighty wave upon this house and i know there will be strange miracles tonight but you see beyond the miracle god doesn't just want to give you a miracle he wants to make you a kind of man so it was in jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 31 that the lord began to lament it was a cry he said the people i have put as systems because whenever god wants to preserve a generation he will raise men as defense that's what happened in ezekiel 22. he said i sought for a man the reason he began to seek for a man he gave us a list prophets began to misbehave priests began to misbehave kings and princes began to misbehave the consequence of their misbehaviors was that the people themselves became a caricature the prophets that were supposed to be a defense they were supposed to be a defense but they began to prophesy falsely what does it mean to prophesy falsely? i've been doing a teaching on the general ordination and i spoke about the prophets what does it mean to prophesy falsely? in this context the the the, the falsehood that the lord was speaking about here was that the prophets were saying things that god had not said so for the prophet a matter becomes false not because it is an untruth 
It is false because it is not from the realm of God. So anything that does not come from the belly of the spirit, a prophet is not permitted to say it. A prophet only speaks because God has spoken. He's a spokesman. spokesman. I told my people that the position of a prophet is the position of a servant. And that servant is satisfied when his master is magnified. The prophet is in the shadows. He doesn't care about himself. It is what the Lord has called him to do that he does. These people began to lie that peace was on the horizon. These people began to lie that all was well. Falsehood began to envelop the land. The consequence of that was the minute there was a collapse in that structure, the priests also partnered with them. The priests who were supposed to know how to enter the presence of God and bring the essence of God to a generation. And this is why the major matter for a priest, the major matter for a prophet was the ability to hear God and speak his counsel. The major matter for the priest was a matter of consecration. His garment, his life was supposed to be totally sold to God. He couldn't come into God's presence if there was as much as a stain on his garment consecration and you will find that one of the indications of a misalignment in consecration is that you will begin to rule by your own means you will begin to judge with your own eyes you will begin to do things that will magnify self and promote your carnal desires and appetites so he said that the priests rule by their own what they rule by their own power. The consequence of this is that they began to pervert justice. When they were supposed to say right, they will say wrong. When they were supposed to say wrong, they will say right. But you see, when you read this scripture, you now find out that after all those defenses had failed, the Lord hoped that there would be a remnant, a people who will get up and say, not be so it's supposed to be. Who will get up and begin to say, Kai, this is not what our fathers taught us. Who will get up and say, not be so. This is what, what Jesus handed over to us. But the sad reality here is that the Bible says, the people, they love to have it. Go to the places where people are operating with divination in the south-south. The crowds are in their thousands. Go to the places where lies are being sold as gospel. The crowd are in their thousands. What the Lord said he will do with this conference is raise a different kind of people with a different kind of appetite. Oh, when there are no longer people who love your product, your product will die in natural death. The reason the prostitute is still on the street is that there are men that come into our place in the night. Some of them with a collar. They come in the night. That's why the prostitute is still in market. The day they are no longer men. So we, when we pray, we don't just pray for the prostitute. Oh God, save the prostitute. The prostitute will find God in the day that she finds out that customers are no longer coming. But you find that there are many customers, some of them with tongues on their lips. They do ga, 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 ga on Sunday. But when body do them one kind, they, they go in the night. To the prostitutes. They go in the night. And you see, I can tell you many stories, but that I'm not at liberty tonight. A brother called me once. He was so in pain, tears in his eyes. He just saw the pastor of a, a large denomination sneaking into the coven of a prostitute in the night. In the night. The reason you will have falsehood continue to thrive, the reason you will have corruption continue to flood the body of Christ is because of the people so tonight before you receive a healing before you receive a miracle and you think that that's all the Christian life is about God says I should ask you what kind of man are you what kind of woman are you you've come now you've received a great teaching you've come now and heard that a man of God must be a husband of one wife and yet even your wife that 
that stays with you at home, she cannot vouch that you are a man of God. Your wife. Nobody knows a preacher like the woman that stays with him at home. If your wife cannot become your first congregation, there is something wrong. And like you heard my father say, that there is a grace that God releases for you to be able to stay in marriage. Grace. Abundant. He said, the people love to have it so. So I asked the, God, the Lord early hours of this afternoon. I said, Lord, why? These were not just any people. The Lord put a qualifier. He said, my people. Why? People who have encountered God, people who know God. How come there's no hunger for the truth? How come there's no hunger for true holiness? How come there's no passion for the lost? The average Christian is selfish. He wants to go to heaven by himself. Check it now. When last, you man of God, when last did you pray for a soul? When last did you weep that somebody was going to hellfire? When last? Even your family members, 90% are not born again. You have never wept before God, never gone on a fast. No passion for the Lord. And the Lord told me that the, the, the environment that falsehood creates is such that it gives the false impression that when lies are propagated, when untruths are presented as the gospel, People have an opportunity to lighten the weight of responsibility from God. So it gives you the impression that the laws and the commandments of God are too hard. So they create an environment that if you want to honor your pastor as a young lady, part of the principles of honor is to give him your body. They tell you things like, uh, get, 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 get. Nobody marries a virgin anymore. No, nobody marries a virgin. No, that virginity is outdated. Young people are arguing. Is it possible to live pure? How can somebody just stay? Just stay. Or God, how can somebody just stay? It's not easy now, but it not be firewood. The reason the people love to have it so is that it gives them an opportunity to empty their conscience of the fear of God and gives them an opportunity to live without government without control we are not in a kingdom that is lawless any man and woman woman that is not under government you cannot wield the gifts of God that's what I'm telling you the Holy Ghost will be in your vessel but he will be sleeping, he will be asleep, he will be at rest. The name of Jesus will be on your tongue, but you will not be able to produce the authority that he produces on the lips of other men. What kind of man, what kind of woman are you? It's good to come to a healing service, but what use is it that your body was healed and your soul is lost? What use is it? What use is it that God gives you a breakthrough and at the gates of heaven you don't get a breakthrough. You are stuck there. An angel say we don't compromise here. Your name is not there. It's not there. The gate will not open to your denomination. The gate will not open to your tight card. The gate will not open to your church attendance. He say my little children of whom I travel as in bed until Christ be formed in you because the thing that the gate of heaven will open to is, is men that look like Jesus when you get there that's what the radar will be checking and you don't need to be offended with me in the book of revelations the bible says that the, 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 the new Jerusalem will have four entrances without gates but the bible says no corruption will be permitted inside that means there will be a screening facility that when you get to the gate, you know, you know, uh, you know, in some in some primary schools, when the picking don't fail, 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 nothing dead the head. They say promoted by force. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. 
in the things of the spirit you you will stay there god is not in a hurry it take it can take god a long time to make one man until you begin to look like what he's making he can keep you in one place and when you get there there's no escape you are not going to dodge you're not going to dodge i was counseling a young lady one time i'm going to do this quickly and then i'll bring my brother up to begin to generate what it is that god will ride upon to bring signs and wonders here tonight she sat in my office tears falling from my eyes i had never met her before till today i don't know how she got my number and it's not just a simple cry it was that kind of cry where kata is coming from the nose so i got up in my office and shut the door so that i will not i will not bring embarrassment to her anybody could walk in so i shut the door i said what is calm down what is the matter then when she could gather herself together she began to tell me how she was in the sanctuary department of her church and every time she goes to clean church a so-called man of god will enter into the bathroom where she is lock the door and begin to touch on her body she had lived with that struggle for months not knowing who to tell what where to where to where to voice her concerns she began to feel dirty began to feel used a man with a collar was using an innocent girl to satisfy his lusts some are not even innocent some consider it a privilege and an honor to sleep with a pastor before you receive a miracle tonight make sure that your soul is safe i heard in the spirit even men that get miracles will still go to hell what guarantees eternity is not a miracle guarantees eternity is not the miracle of your body is the miracle of salvation tonight wherever you are i don't want to make assumptions that a crowd two thousand three thousand four thousand gathered in the apostolic uh, 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 invasion how many souls have actually come to rest Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And the rest I will give you is not for your bank account. The rest I will give you is not for your academics. I will bring rest to your souls. The Holy Spirit was telling me that a godless soul will always be restless. Restless, trying to find expression, trying to find meaning. A godless soul. We'd always be restless.